guys, Miss Kulkarni here. So guess what? In this video, we are going to talk about analgesics. And I'm telling you right now, each one of you had definitely at least taken or maybe thought of taking some analgesics sometime in your life. So look at these. These are the examples of over-the-counter analgesics. Aspirin, then we have Tylenol, we have Ibuprofen. Of course, there are more. So let's find out what are analgesics and how are they classified. There are different types of analgesics and we'll talk about that in a minute. First of all, analgesics, the basic definition is pain relievers. Now some people may use the word painkiller, but honestly, we sometimes cannot get rid of the pain completely. We can reduce it, we can relieve it. So pain reliever is a good way to define analgesics. And then how do you classify those analgesics? There are mainly two classes of analgesics. Some are called as mild and some are called as strong. It's pretty easy, straightforward. Mild will have the mild effect and strong will have strong effect. So which are the other terms we talk about when we consider analgesics? We already got this. Analgesics are pain relievers. They reduce the pain. There are many of the analgesics which are also antipyretic. What does that mean? The word antipyretic means reducing the fever. And many times fever comes along with the pain or sometimes pain is caused, then fever comes or sometimes fever causes pain. It's all related. So many times having that property of antipyretic nature is helpful to us when we take any analgesics. And the third word is anti-inflammatory. Many times with the pain, if there's injury to any particular site, we may get some swelling and for relieving the pain because of the swelling and inflammation which we got, we can also have anti-inflammatory drugs. And many of these drugs are also good anti-inflammatory drugs. So let's go back to our classification. Uh, as we say, we have two different types, mild and then we have strong analgesics. The main simple over-the-counter mild analgesics are aspirin, acetaminophen or we call it as Tylenol and then ibuprofen. How do they look? What the structure is? And we have a separate video on these but I thought maybe it's important to again discuss these with related to structure and activity. So these are the structures of these three mild analgesics. And then over-the-counter drugs, they're sold by some trade names. So the common aspirin will be buyer's ice cream. Also, every store has their store brand aspirin also, which is same compound. Then there is Tylenol, or which is also called as paracetamol. And then there is ibuprofen, uh, which is also used over-the-counter. So look at the properties which we talked about. There are analgesics, antipyretic, and anti-inflammatory properties. Where do all these three mild analgesics stand for? And there is good news. All of these are analgesics. Of course, that's why we put them into the category for analgesic. Aspirin is a good, decent analgesic. Paracetamol is a weak analgesic. And Ibuprofen is considered as a strong analgesic. So kind of it gives you idea which one you may prefer. Of course, there are some side effects for each of that. So that also matters. But as far as pain is concerned, then ibuprofen is considered as the strongest one and aspirin is always a good one. Antipyretic, well, they all have some antipyretic properties. That's good news. They all will help with reducing the fever. We somehow, of course, prefer Tylenol for fever because it brings down fever quickly. And of course, there are some good things about Tylenol. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Then the anti-inflammatory properties. Again, they all have those properties. But aspirin falls into good. This one is called as the mild anti-inflammatory and ibuprofen is considered as a good anti-inflammatory agent too. So this may help you and your doctor to prescribe and decide which 
and not just sick you may want to take all right now they all have similar properties so what is the big deal are they structurally similar and if so which are the groups they have similar so i have here phenyl group as a listed here which is the benzene ring if you look carefully all of these have a benzene ring that's good news then there is carboxylic acid let's find out which compounds have carboxylic acid aspirin has a carboxylic acid right over here paracetamol does not have a carboxylic acid but we have ibuprofen has a carboxylic acid there too so phenyl group yes for all carboxylic acid yes for aspirin this is no for paracetamol and of course yes for ibuprofen then there is carbonyl group which is in the form of ester or amide so let's look at aspirin and look at this group over here ococh3 what is that that group is an ester group look at the one which we got over here in paracetamol that is nhco this bond is an amide bond so there you go we got amide over here and when we come to ibuprofen it does not have any other group than carboxylic acid so no so overall if you look at all these three structures they do have some similarities similar groups and maybe that's the key for having similar properties moving on all these compounds are helpful in certain ways and also there are some risk factors associated with each one of those so let's compare these three mild analgesics and find out how they are helpful to us the first one is aspirin and it is very easy to make this in fact we make this in our lab all the time so it is inexpensive it available over the counter it is also a vasodilator that means it dilates expands the blood vessels and that's why it can be used in treatment with heart disease as an additional aid then when we come to paracetamol this one is safer in children that is a good useful thing then it is also a good antipyretic apart from analgesic this will be the way to go if you have fever ibuprofen we know it is the strong one out of all these three this is strong analgesic so if you are in too much pain then probably good idea to go for ibuprofen then about the risk factors look at aspirin there is that carboxylic acid group also look at ibuprofen that also has that coh group what does it mean that means both these can cause acidity in serious condition they can also cause ulcers also aspirin is not suitable for kids it can cause some problems whereas in case of ibuprofen it may be in high doses could cause some kidney diseases kidney problems also and for paracetamol or acetaminophen the main thing is it is a weak anti inflammatory agent analgesic and only in high doses it can cause some serious side effects so kind of you got an idea about comparing all those mild analgesics okay let's move on to strong analgesics now and we have discussed these analgesics in a different video which is opiates the main important one we are going to talk in this video are morphine codeine and heroin or which is also called as dimorphine and how do they look that's the structure for all three and look at that the main difference they have is morphine has two hydroxide codeine has one group which is methoxy group and look at dimorphine these two groups are the ester groups so everything else is same except the side chains which we have here hanging out those are different and that certainly changes the properties for each one of those they are discussed in separate videos so please check those out 
Now, let's compare mild versus strong analgesics which we talked about. We just discussed these three mild analgesics which are obviously over the counter and we talked briefly about the strong analgesics. So what are the main differences between these two? Look at this. We definitely have mild analgesic listed as weaker painkillers. That means they will be only available for milder pain. Whereas the strong analgesics are for stronger. Like suppose somebody has surgery, then maybe morphine or codeine are prescribed sometimes for uh, pain reliever by doctor. Then the mild analgesics are not that dangerous. They have minimal side effects. So they can be available over the counter and they are pretty inexpensive. How about the strong analgesics? They definitely need a prescription. Some of these, those like dimorphine is also a controlled substance. So it's not easy to get these strong analgesics for your treatment. And finally about side effects, all the mild analgesics have minor undesired side effect like maybe acidity or even ulcer. It's not a big deal. There is a treatment for that. But in case of the strong analgesic, the side effects are major. One of them could be addiction. It can also affect the brain CNS system. So it's a different deal. And then your doctor may prescribe you which analgesic you need based upon your condition. And of course, they will have some precautions uh, for you to follow. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I hope to see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.